All right, so we're back here. Now we're going to make it so that we don't just have a list of all the um, tasks that have been saved to, to local storage inside of the user defaults. We're also going to just make a list of that and put it into a table. So from an app standpoint, workflow standpoint, I want to see a giant list of all my tasks and then have like an add button to see this create new task screen that we have right here. So I'm going to start off by making that table view controller. And this table view controller is going to, again, show me all my tasks. I'm going to scoot it over so I can see it. And I'm going to move this little arrow by clicking and dragging. This, this arrow indicates what the first view controller that should load up in the app is. So I want to default to seeing this. I'm going to make all the standard changes to my prototype cells that I make when we were working on the, the Pokedex. I'm going to make sure that I name the default cell my cell inside the resource identifier right here so that I can get to it later. That looks good to me. I'm going to then create a Swift file that I'm going to tie to this table view. I'm going to give it a name. Task list view controller. I like to reuse, I like to have long names like this so that just easy to remember where everything is. And it is a UI view controller. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and create it. Great. And I'm going to augment the ability of task view controller to not only be able to do things like UI view controller, but also I want to be able to use UI table view data source and UI table view delegate. And this will throw me that really helpful error message right there, which just says, hey, you don't have the things that tables are allowed to have. Do you want to fix it? Yes. And it creates all the stuff for me. So this tells me the number of rows and sections and the cell for index path. To start with, this, so this creates the cells. This creates the sections. We're just going to return and say there are no sections or there are no rows in the section. And we're going to use this simple code that I'm going to steal from the Pokedex app to um, generate my cells. Okay. So there. Now we have, if you don't recall, this... Um, oh, I should uh, wire that up really quick. So we need to have two screens at the same time. So I'm going to connect my table view with my Swift code. Make sure that my table view is selected over here, not the cell. Oh, duh. I need to wire up this whole entire table view, this entire view controller with the task view controller. So I need to go over here and make sure that it has the name task list view controller why does it like that task list view controller i think the problem is is this is not technically a ui table view controller as well so let's add that Yay. All right, now we'll wire it up properly. And we should be able to link these two together. I'll fix all these exclamation points in a minute. Make sure that the table view is selected. So I can drag it over. Make sure that it is the table view, and it is. And I'm going to call that task list table view. And I'm going to kill this so that I can see all my Xcode stuff pretty well. Okay. Apparently, I don't need this. And I probably don't need a data source either. Okay. All 
I'm going to now test this, make sure that everything works. And all I should do is see a cell, a empty table. Awesome. Let's go ahead and populate that table. And specifically, I want to populate that table with the things that have been saved into it already. So that's all viewed at load stuff, just like we had done before. So I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to make sure that I can control my table using this file, using this override, or using this viewed load. And so that's specifically using delegate and data source. So that's task list table view dot delegate and task list table view dot data source. For those of you following along at home, this is just the standard stuff that we did for the Pokédex. That should be nothing new. And then what I'm going to do is go back to my first view control that we worked on in the last video and get all that load data stuff out of here. Copy. Paste. I'm going to get rid of the print all tasks. It's going to throw me an error message in a second saying, hey, all tasks doesn't exist. So I'm going to go ahead and create in, yep, see, there it is. Um, in this view controller, I'm going to create all tasks using the same code that I used before. So that's all tasks is a array of tasks. And we're going to go ahead and put in the default, an array of tasks. Come on. Oh, I don't have the struct of the task, so I have it saved over here. Let's copy paste it. So we need to just remind, remember, these things don't exist across multiple um, view controllers. So I have the task struct that I need to load back in, that I need to build again, and say all tasks is a collection of those. So that's a task. And it's going to say, oh, I need to know which string and int and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give it a default that will get erased in a minute. Give it a default status and a default priority. There we go. And so now this right here is just getting a default state. And then this will immediately override it. If I run it, nothing will happen. because I haven't actually filled all this stuff with all tasks. Well, you should be able to know how to do this pretty quickly now since we've done the same thing with the Pikachu stuff. So instead of saying, hey, the cell's uh, text label is gonna say test, and instead of saying the length, the number of elements that needs to display in this table is zero, we're gonna use all tasks. So the number of rows I need to have is all tasks.count. So if there's five things, then it just pops it five times. If I run this now, I'll say test, 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 the total number of things that are in storage. Awesome. That's what I'm expecting. And so now I have test, 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 test. Instead of the word test, let's replace it with what's actually been saved into the array. And so that is all tasks. Go into the specific element that we're on. And so that's index path.row. But don't just give me the entire element, the entire task. That's that's a whole thing. That's an entire struct called task. I want the specific thing inside of that task, the task name. And so now if I build it, I have all of these things put together. Awesome. How am I going to get over to the make new item so that it goes down at the bottom? That's easy. We're going to take our storyboard. And I'm going to take this first view controller here, and I'm going to embed it into a navigation controller. So now I have this bar across the top. And I'm going to string these together, so pretty soon there's going to be a bar across the top up here. And as you can see, if I get these lined up, that bar will cover up the create new task label. So I'm just going to move these things down for now to get them out of the way, then tuck them back up later. So what I want to do is have a button up here in the navigation controller that you use to create a new task. 
The good news is there's a special kind of button that can go up there that we haven't talked about, and that's a, a bar button item. I can put that right there, and it'll automatically hug the right edge of the screen, which is cool. I don't want to say item though. I want it to be one of the defaults for the system. So instead of a custom word, I want it to just be the add symbol. And then I'm going to tie the add button to the create new task. And now we're almost done. Let's move this up here. Hit go. So here's my list of all my stuff. Sweet. Exactly what I want. Then you hit the plus button. And I can create a new task. So maybe go to sleep is the last thing of the day. And that's, you know, I'd say pretty high importance. Hit save. And go back. Wah wah, go to sleep isn't here. Why? Well, iOS is trying to be nice to you. And what it's doing is when you hit this, it doesn't actually completely load out that list. It's still sitting there in memory. And so when I hit back, it's just loading that back up. What I need to do is refresh this list now that I have a new item in, that's been saved. In fact, the thing is saved. So like if I were to rebuild this, my new item, go to sleep, will appear at the bottom of that list. See? It's just that when I create a new thing, so sleep all night, let's say it's a task. It's a medium task. Sleep all night does not show up down there. So what I need to do is when you make a new task and come back to this screen to refresh this list and make it show up there. To do that, it's not very hard. We're going to use a new thing, and the new thing is called view will appear. View will appear similar to view did load, only it fires when you're coming back from other animation, in other words, from other projects or other, or other view controllers rather. So we're going to override the existing view will appear. It's triggered on animation. And we're going to take that same load all the data stuff in. So reload all the data out of storage when we come back to this page. And then just really simple, go into the self, go into this view controller change the task list table view and how do I want to change it I just want to reload it what it's going to do is it's going to rerun this stuff and because right above it in line 51 52 and 53 all tasks which is being used for the count and for populating the cell is being updated with the new data that I had saved in the previous screen and so now this will just reload it and it'll look nice So I have a table of stuff, I hit the plus button. Maybe after you sleep all night, you want to uh, wake up to your alarm clock again the next day. That's really important. Hit save, and now when I come back, wake up to alarm clock shows up. Sweet, I now have a task list. I don't have any way of updating the task list, like completing things and checking things off or fixing misspellings or um, using the prioritization or the status stuff in order to make things disappear off this list. I don't have any of that kind of stuff yet, but I have enough, and this is pretty awesome. So that's going to be it for today. On Thursday, we'll get back to making custom table view or custom cells, so like on here, show priority. And then I'll also make it so that I can edit these things by tapping on them. So either edit their name or edit their status, and then we'll be done.